Ford F-Series, best-selling full-size pickup 12 years in a row. Ford Econoline, best-selling full-size van 10 years in a row. Ford Club Wagon, best-selling full-size wagon. Ford Bronco, best-selling full-size sport utility 10 years in a row. Hi, I'm Jim Hale. Welcome to Competition Today. This tape will focus on the full-size light truck market segment, which can also be called the Ford market segment because of our sales leadership in this area. Whether it's a van, wagon, pickup, or utility, Ford is the popular choice. Here to tell you more about these full-size champions is my co-host for Competition Today, Nancy Rice. Thanks, Jim. You know, many people are responsible for Ford's consistent truck leadership position. A strong contribution comes from you, the salespeople, who day in and day out make their living selling Ford trucks. So on behalf of the Ford division, we thank all of you who have worked so hard, and we hope that this presentation will help you continue to outsell the competition. Truck leadership and the best-selling light trucks in each segment are important bragging rights, but not everyone knows about Ford truck leadership. In fact, as you'll soon see, many people don't know what the best-selling vehicle in the United States is. Let's see, um, Escort, I guess. I think last year it was the Taurus. Chevy Corsica. I know, I own one. It is a minivan, isn't it? I don't know, a Toyota Celica? <laughs> I haven't the faintest idea. A VW Beetle? I think it used to be one of the big cars, the Impala but now I think it's one of the small cars. Well, if it isn't a minivan, then tell me, what is it? Well, the answer is none other than the Ford F-Series light truck. And not only did it lead all cars and trucks in sales last year, but it has for the past seven years running. The primary F-Series competitor in the full-size light truck segment is the Chevrolet CK pickup. Chevrolet has been pushing the CK through ads that feature singular Chevy advantages over Ford trucks. Because Chevrolet is our most formidable competitor, it's necessary to address the CK claims. Nancy, what's the Chevy strategy for 89? For 1989, the CK is essentially a carryover of the model they brought out in 1987. Chevy is promoting the Sportside 4x4 as their image model, but their high volume truck will probably be the C1500 long wheelbase Silverado with their comparable value package. The specific Chevrolet claims you may hear from F-Series shoppers are, more standard horsepower, 4x4 Insta-Track shift on the fly system, a higher 4x4 ground clearance, and their new three-year, 50,000-mile bumper-to-bumper plus warranty. Ken Martin is with both vehicles now and has some interesting insights on these claims and more. Ken? Thanks, Nancy. I'm here with Chevy's 1989 C1500 Silverado and the F-150 4x2 XLT Lariat. Looking at both trucks, I've found that this F-150 is equipped with many tough truck features you won't find on the Chevy. Both vehicles have rear anti-lock brakes and both have independent front suspensions, true. But Chevy's 4x2 AA arm suspension is similar to their Caprice car design. And the torsion bar spring design used on their 4x4s is also similar to the type used on many passenger cars. Ford, on the other hand, uses the Ford truck exclusive 4x2 twin I-beam, and on 4x4s, twin traction beam independent front suspension. Both are truck-proven designs. Try to find a twin I-beam or twin traction beam on a car. And Ford's frame is a riveted and bolted ladder type, similar to those found on medium and heavy trucks, while Chevy's frame is a welded design, typical of that used on passenger cars with body-on-frame construction. Chevy boasts more standard horsepower, but they don't tell you that Ford 6 has more load-moving torque, which is more essential to trucks. Ford's engines are also larger. In fact, Ford has the largest gas 6 and gas or diesel V8s in the light truck industry. And there's more. All Ford gas engines use advanced multiple port electronic fuel injection with an injector at each cylinder for a total of 6 or 8. Chevy, on the other hand, uses throttle body EFI, with only two injector points for the total engine. And that's a less precise fuel metering system. Ford also offers six different transmissions on the F-Series. Chevy, only four. 
Included in Ford's lineup are the smooth shifting, fully synchronized, five-speed manuals with overdrive, standard on every F-Series model. Chevy's five-speed manuals are not available with every model, and they are not synchronized in reverse, and that can cause a clashing of gears between first and reverse. Ford also has the new electronically controlled four-speed automatic transmission with overdrive. It provides overdrive efficiency for over 8,500 pound GVW rated vehicles and is particularly advantageous with diesels. Chevy doesn't offer an electronically controlled transmission. In fact, they don't offer automatic overdrive for any vehicles rated over 8,500 pounds. Now, let's take a look at where the work is done. Back here, you'll find a major Ford advantage, the pickup box. Ford's box is wider, deeper, and longer than Chevy's, with more cargo volume. And payload? F-Series beats the CK in most payload comparison matchups, including this F-150 4x2 long wheelbase comparison. In fact, with a maximum payload of 2,485 pounds versus the C-1500's 2,239 pound max, the F-150 has a 246 pound payload advantage over the Chevy. That's about the weight of these five sacks of salt, but payload isn't the only advantage Ford has over the Chevy box. This is a cap that was taken off a 1987 Chevy RV pickup. It was the design used until the CK was introduced, and still is used, by the way, for their crew cabs and bonus cabs, but we're using it for demonstration purposes. Now, this cap fit on the RV design, but if someone's buying a new CK, they'll find out their old cap or camper just won't fit anymore. See, when Chevy redesigned their pickup, they redesigned the box, actually tapering it from front to rear, making many of these cabs and campers obsolete. Let's see how it fits on a Ford. As you can see, this cap will fit a Ford. So, if a prospect owns an expensive cap or camper, Point out the added savings they'll have if they buy an F-Series. But the F-Series is more than just a tough pickup. Inside, it's convenience that counts. Ford's high level of standard equipment and package savings make this a value-packed truck. There are some features you won't find on any Chevy CK pickup, like these vent windows or these drip rails, which help keep the rain off when you open the door. And you probably know that Chevy has a new warranty the three-year, 50,000, bumper-to-bumper plus. Oh, there is a plus, all right. If something happens to an expensive powertrain component, after that three-year period, a customer will pay for the full repair. Ford still offers the six-year, 60,000-mile powertrain coverage, which covers the powertrain for twice as long as the Chevy. So much for their warranty. But the bottom line with most buyers is price. Shoppers may ask, with all of the Ford advantages, there must be a catch. So what about the price? Well, if you take the manufacturer's suggested retail price of this Focus model, XLT Lariat, PEP 507A, regular cab F-150, with a manual transmission, special value package, and compare that to the MSRP of a comparably equipped Chevy Silverado with their value package, P1A3, you'll find that the Ford is actually priced over $800 less than the Chevy. That's enough to pop that balloon. Looking at these two trucks, we find that F-Series has many tough truck features, while some Chevy claims may be just a lot of hot air. I'm Ken Martin with this tough Ford pickup and that Chevy. Back to you, Nancy. Thanks, Ken. Because of increased demand and production capabilities, Ford will expand the availability of over 8,500 pound GVW vehicles for 1989. How do they compare to Chevy, Jim? Well, F-Series has the crew cab. There isn't a CK version. Chevy's only crew cab is based on their old RV models. And Ford has the new electronically controlled four-speed automatic with overdrive, also known as the E4OD, another exclusive. And Ford's 7.3-liter diesel engine is the most popular diesel in the over 8,500-pound GVW market. Finally, Ford has the F Super Duty models with payloads and GVWs that Chevy light trucks don't come close to. To sum it all up, whether it's an F Super Duty, 
an F-350, F-250 heavy duty, or an F-150, Ford combines the capacities, payloads, and power that buyers expect with advanced functional features they'll rely on. And combine those tough truck features with a high level of standard equipment and package savings, and you've got America's choice again. Now let's see if you can answer this. What is the only domestic manufacturer to feature multiple port EFI on all of its light truck gasoline engines? Welcome back to Competition Today as we continue our look at the full-size light truck market segment, or as we call it, the Ford segment. And if you haven't already guessed the answer to the question, Ford is the only manufacturer to offer multiple port electronic fuel injection on all of its light truck gasoline engines. Now let's take a look at the full-size van segment. Nancy? As you probably know, the Ford Econoline van has dominated the full-size van segment for 15 of the last 19 years. The Chevy van is usually regarded as Ford's primary competition in the van market. Chevy plugs their advantages over Ford, including more horsepower with their standard 4.3-liter engine and the availability of their 6.2-liter diesel on their G20 series. Their focus model will be the G10 long wheelbase van. But what about the Econoline's advantages? The Econoline's focus model for 1989 is the E150 long wheelbase regular van with PEP 640A. Chevy may have more standard horsepower with their 4.3 Vortec V6 engine, but Ford's 4.9 inline 6 delivers more torque, 35 foot-pounds more, and torque provides load-carrying power. Ford's 4.9 is one of the most popular engines among major fleet vehicles. And the Econoline van is loaded with Ford exclusive features that Chevy can only envy. Twin I-beam independent front suspension and body on frame construction are Ford exclusives. Traditional tough truck features that buyers appreciate. Chevy on the other hand has an A-arm front suspension and unibody construction. Both those Chevy design features are similar to those used in some passenger cars. Ford also has the exclusive out front engine design which is not only easy for servicing but allows more room in the front compartment and easier front to rear walk through. The Chevy doesn't have an out front engine design so there's less room to move. You'll also notice that Chevy doesn't have a right hand passenger seat. That's because it's an extra cost option. Ford's is standard. These vehicles are dedicated cargo carriers. So how do they compare in load hauling and carrying? Well, the maximum payload for each series shows that Ford has the advantage. A 246-pound advantage for the E-150 series, a 470-pound advantage for the 250 series, and a 482-pound advantage for the 350 series. But what about cargo area? Payload advantages don't mean much if you can't find the space to use it. Comparing both long wheelbase regular vans without the right-hand passenger seat, the Econoline can carry over 42 cubic feet more than the Chevy van. To put that in perspective, that's approximately the size of this six-foot desk. That's right, and if that isn't enough, Econolines are available in supervan models which provide over 347 cubic feet of cargo space for an incredible advantage of over 87 cubic feet more than Chevy's maximum capacity. To put that in perspective, 87 cubic feet is over one-third more cargo area than Chevy's maximum capacity. In fact, it's more than the entire passenger volume of an escort wagon. It seems that any way you look at those numbers, Ford is the winner. But are there any more Econoline advantages? Econoline has more engines to choose from, more transmissions to select, and the E-150 regular van with standard trim and PEP 640A has a higher level of standard equipment than the Chevy. Add those to the Econoline exclusive features and higher payloads and cargo capacities, and it's no wonder the Econoline has led this segment in sales for the past 10 years. Now let's talk about the other Econoline, Club Wagon. 1988 was definitely a banner year for the Club Wagon. Through your dedicated efforts, the Club Wagon gained segment leadership for the first time in seven years. Great going. But keeping that leadership will be a tough task. The Dodge Wagon was the leader for seven previous years, and they'll be pushing hard to regain the lead. Dodge has a Maxi Wagon, which is available on their 250 series. Ford Super Wagons are only available on 350 series. Dodge will also push their Prospector package value. And like Club Wagon, they have a 15-passenger maximum capacity. Club Wagon shares the Econoline van's exclusive features of twin I-beam independent front suspension, out-front engine design, 
and body-on-frame construction. The club wagon also offers the choice of five engines, including the light truck industry's largest V8s, the 7.3-liter diesel and 7.5-liter gas. And all Ford engines use multi-port electronic fuel injection. Nancy, how does Dodge compare? Well, Jim, Dodge uses a short, long-arm independent front suspension that is similar to some passenger cars. Their engine position limits the front seat area. They use a more car-like unibody construction. And, Jim, you mentioned Ford's five engines and largest available V8s. Well, Dodge only offers three engines, none of which is a diesel. And they all use less precise throttle body fuel injection. Ford's 7.5-liter gas engine has over 19% more maximum horsepower and over 27% more maximum torque than Dodge's largest, the 5.9-liter V8. But the main function of full-size wagons is hard-working people carriers. How do these two compare in seating capacities? Well, for the standard long wheelbase 150 series, Club Wagon has standard eight-passenger seating with a five-passenger option. Dodge has five-passenger standard seating without an optional upgrade. On 250 models, Club Wagon has standard 12-passenger seating, which isn't even offered on the Dodge. And on the 350 series, the Club Wagon has standard seating for 15 passengers. Dodge's 15-passenger capacity is only available at extra cost. The Club Wagon also has a high level of standard equipment. And when you look at the MSRP savings of the Focus model E150 XLT 705A, you'll find a savings of more than $1,200 over the comparably equipped Dodge Ram Wagon LE with Prospector Package 4. So for buyers looking for a value-packed passenger carrier, Club Wagon combines exclusive tough truck features, engine selection, seating capacities, and impressive value for the dollar features that will again place it in the winner's circle for 1989. We'll be back after this question. Since 1916, Ford has sold over 31 million trucks. About how many are still on the road today? Welcome back. You know, we talk about how tough Ford trucks are. But of the 31 million Ford light trucks built since 1916, almost half are still on the road today. Now that's tough proof. It sure is, Jim. Our last full-size truck segment will focus on Ford's leader in the full-size sport utility segment for the past decade, the Bronco. The Bronco's popularity has been so strong that this year Ford has expanded production to improve availability. Bronco's number one competitor is the full-size Chevy Blazer. Chevy sales pros will point out that the Blazer has a diesel option available and a standard V8. And Blazer has almost four cubic feet more cargo room when the rear seat is removed. However, the Bronco XLT 684A Focus model has a standard six-cylinder. And if more horsepower is desired, Bronco still offers two optional V8 engines. Blazer comes with a standard V8 and doesn't even offer a six. And when Chevy redesigned their full-size pickup in 1988, they neglected to do the same for the Blazer. Bronco shares the latest restyling Ford made on the F-Series. But styling isn't the only place where Bronco has an advantage. Bronco has advanced functional features, too. Twin traction beam independent front suspension allows independent wheel travel versus Chevy's older monoaxle system. Multiple port electronic fuel injection gives a more precise fuel delivery than Chevy's throttle body system. And Ford's fully synchronized manual five-speed overdrive transmission provides smooth shifting of gears that Chevy's can't always provide. The Bronco also has rear anti-lock brakes, which function in two-wheel drive. Blazer doesn't. Now, to demonstrate this advantage, take your average tennis ball. When the rear brakes on a Blazer lock up, the wheels lock up, skidding the tires. Now, Bronco's rear anti-lock system will allow the rear wheels to continue to rotate under heavy braking. This design helps to prevent rear wheel lockup under most two-wheel drive operating conditions. Bronco also has higher trailer towing ratings than the Chevy. 1,800 pounds more. That's a lot of trailer. And when it comes to four-wheel drive capability, don't forget that Bronco offers the touch drive electric shift, which allows shifting on the fly from too high to four high at the touch of a button at any speed. No other full-size sport utility can do that. Not Blazer, not anyone. The touch drive console also allows unrestricted legroom by pulling the four-wheel shifter off of the floor for added front seating convenience. Blazer may have more cargo volume when you remove the rear seats, but what they don't say is that the Blazer comes standard that way, without the rear seat. Their rear bench is extra cost. 
Bronco's rear seat is standard on all models. Bronco also has optional six passenger seating with a front bench seat. Chevy doesn't even offer seating for six on any Blazer. Jim? When you combine Bronco's long list of standard equipment with the Focus model XLT PEP 684A with the manual transmission special value package, you can show a sticker price savings of more than $480 over a comparably equipped Chevy Blazer. And let's not forget that there is also the unique Eddie Bauer Bronco with styling and equipment flares all its own. And it comes equipped with the Ford Care 24-month, 24,000-mile warranty, in addition to the standard 660 powertrain coverage. Value for the buck. Exclusive full-size sport utility features, greater trailer towing capacities, and a wide choice of features. It's easy to see why buyers make the Bronco the full-size sport utility leader year after year. For Jim Hale, I'm Nancy Rice saying thanks for joining us on this segment of Competition Today. For more insights on the truck market, review your Competition Today print materials. Thanks again and keep up the good work.